Hello, this is Reza from Red Hat, and today I'm going to talk about one of the connection types in Power BI called import data, or some people call it scheduled refresh. Uh, what are pros and what are cons? What are scenarios you have to use import data and, and what are scenarios you cannot use it? Let's check it out. Uh, in Power BI, there are four types of connections. Import data and scheduled refresh is one of those. There are other types of connections which I have already written blog post articles about those. Links are down in the description below. Um, and I will create videos about those as well later on. So let's check the first type of connection, which is import data. Import data is the only selection of um, option when you use a specific data sources. For example, if you are getting data from Excel, from CSV, from web, the only type of connection available is import data. It means that you are importing data into the Power BI in memory storage. Um, for some of the other data sources, import data is one of the options, like SQL Server, if I use connection to SQL Server. Um, as you can see here, uh, the data connectivity mode can be import or something else. Now, there is a mistake thinking for some of people that they think if they use SQL Server, because SQL Server is a query language, so they have to use direct query, that's totally wrong. Direct query is used for other purposes. I'll talk about that in another video or check down uh, under the description link about direct query. So even with SQL Server, even with analysis services, with all of those, you can use import. Import is the only type of connection that you can use uh, regardless of the data source. All the data sources are supporting import uh, data anyway. Now, what happens when you use import data? When you use import data, Power BI actually uh, creates a copy of the data from that data source. Actually, whatever you select it, because you can go to Power Query, you can filter the data, you can remove some columns. So after doing all of those, whatever remained will be loaded into Power BI in memory storage. You cannot see that in memory storage, but while I have the Power BI desktop opened, if I go to task manager of my machine, I can see that uh, under Power BI desktop uh, task, I can see that there are a number of uh, things going on. And one of those is Microsoft SQL Server analysis services, which is using uh, memory. This is where the in-memory storage of Power BI is. This is where the data loads into the memory. Even if you run Power BI on a machine without SQL Server Analysis Services, it will automatically install it because Power BI um, dataset engine is based on Analysis Services engine. So there is an in-memory storage, like an in-memory database management system, that data will be loaded into that memory. Now, there are things about using this option. So when you use import data, um, one of the main things is that it is available for all data sources, regardless of data source, you can do import. This is the preferred option for most of data sources because this is the fastest option using Power BI because when data is loaded into the memory, everything is much faster. Now you need to do refresh your model as a preferred option for uh, Power BI, you have to use import data as uh, much as possible because uh, it is the fastest option for Power BI when the data is in memory. However, there's a limitation. The limitation is that you can have, uh, so uh, the Power BI file in the desktop can be as big as you want, but when you want to publish it into the website, the limitation is that if you are using Power BI Pro, you cannot have one file more than one gigabyte of the size. If you are using <clears throat> if you are using report server, two gigabyte. If you are using Power BI Premium, ten gigabyte. Now for premium, uh, the file size might change, and you might have bigger uh, file size allowance. However, there is always a limitation, and especially with Power BI Pro, I don't think that becomes more than one gigabyte at any stage. Uh, now, you might think that uh, your database is definitely more than one gigabyte, so Power BI probably is not an option for you, which is not the case, because uh, Power BI by default applies some uh, compression, which is called X-Velocity compression. Now, X-Velocity compression itself is quite a big discussion and big topic if I want to go to the details of that. I will just show you a very high-level example about that, and that will give you an idea how it works. Imagine we have a table like this, 
Imagine this table has a number of columns. Let's say we have um, 10, 20 columns. Every column has a data type, like order ID is an integer, four bytes, quarter is another integer, four bytes. So every column might have different data type, uh, and based on that, it might consume a uh, number of bytes. Now, let's say for one row, we calculated one row would be something like 100 bytes, right? And consider that this is a really big, uh, uh, table. Let's say this table is like 100 millions of rows. Uh, now, 100 million rows, every row take 100 bytes, this will end up with 10 gigabyte. One single table would be 10 gigabyte. This is the traditional way of storing data, not the way that Power BI stores data. Uh, in the traditional way, way of storing data, we store data row by row. Now, uh, the new technology, the newer technology called, um, let's say, column store technology, it's saying that instead of storing one row at a time, let's store one column at a time. And in one column, you have a lot of data that are repeated. Like in quarter column, uh, the values that we have are only four unique values, one, two, three, four. Uh, and it is repeated. So why you have to store like 100 millions of these values when you have only four possibilities. So what happens in column store technology is that, um, so obviously there are lots of details about that, but it will be something like that in a very high level. Uh, every column will be sorted based on the values. And there will be an index table created for that. Like this is the quarter column, quarter one, one, one for as many as rows. It's there, two, three, four. And an index table that says for quarter one, start index is one, end index is whatever, quarter two, start and end, quarter three, start and end, quarter four, start and end. So this would be like a table of four by three, uh, 12 integer values. 12 integer values, every value is four bytes. It's 48 bytes, this table, this column. Now imagine if you wanted to store this column uh, normally, that would be 100 million rows multiplied by 4 bytes, 400 million bytes or 400 megabytes, right? So compare 400 megabytes with 48 bytes. That's how the compression engine in Power BI works. Um, as I said, there are lots of details, there are lots of things about it that you can make the Power BI compression engine better using columns that have um, uh, let's say less unique values uh, would definitely help. Uh, however, my point here is not talking about performance and compression engine. It's about the fact that Power BI will compress the data. So if you have a database, SQL Server database that is more than one gigabyte, when you load it into Power BI, it's very likely that it be much less than that number. However, there is a limitation, and if you hit that limitation, um, then your next option is to switch into um, direct query or live connection or composite model. We'll talk about those in other videos. <clears throat> so import data has this limitation of the size. However, with import data, everything is super fast. Everything is flexible. You can get part of your data, like one or two tables coming from an Excel file, another part of data coming from CSV files, some other parts of it coming from SQL Server. You can combine all of these together uh, with import data. There is no limitation on the number of sources that you use. And even in Power BI, you can uh, see the data in the data tab loaded into the Power BI in-memory storage. Uh, with import data, uh, you have uh, other benefits as well. You can use DAX calculations as much as you like, and DAX is the most powerful analytic engine in Power BI, which can be quite useful. Power Query, you can use that without limit. Um, so in general, uh, import data, whenever you use it, you get full flexibility, you use Power Query, you use DAX without any limits. All other methods has limitations on DAX and Power Query. Import data is the only method that has no limitations on these. Whatever you can do in Power Query and DAX generally are available in this. Uh, 
Uh, it is super fast because data isn't loaded into the memory. However, there are a couple of disadvantages. One is that if your data set is large, very large, uh, uh, which it cannot fit into that one gigabyte, two, gig two gigabyte, 10 gigabyte, whatever the limitation size is, um, then you have to switch into other, other methods. And another limitation is that you have to refresh your data uh, after publishing into Power BI. Here is an example of a uh, uh, number of Power BI data sets, which, are, which I can go and schedule the refresh for them uh, in the website. Uh, if I don't do the schedule refresh, if these are import data, their data will not be updated. And you can ref schedule this to be refreshed uh, up to eight times a day with Power BI. Uh, Pro up to 48 times a day with premium and some other options like refresh with REST API and things like that. So uh, pros and cons, super fast, very flexible, import data. Uh, usually this should be your first option of using uh, connection type in Power BI unless uh, you hit the limitations, which are uh, the number of times that you want to refresh or the size of data set. Uh, I will explain about other types of connections and you can even read it now under the description below links to my articles. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and uh, we have weekly Power BI and AI videos. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.